much. It's now time to have a quick chat with uh, the GFA president, Mr. Kurt E.S. Okreku. Now, Kurt, thank you very much for giving us a little bit of your time. And it's always refreshing to see you here among the young ones. It is a baby you have been crying for, a baby you think when nurtured right will produce the best of results. So today you have two babies on display, the young talent at under 17 level and then the catch them young. We will come to the catch them young in a bit, but let's take a look at what you have observed today. You're spending the day with us, you're watching some of the matches, your impressions. First of all, I'm, I'm very happy uh, to be here. Especially when it has to do with uh, the kids, because I love to be with the kids. I've always preached this gospel that if we want a better tomorrow, we need to give off our best today for, for the younger kid generation. So I'm very happy to be part of this uh, special event, which is covered live on Max TV, Your Good Selves. Um, I've watched one game live. I mean, live, live. I watched uh, two games uh, via your platforms yesterday, and I would want to say that I'm very impressed with um, the level of organization. I'm very impressed with the quality of the intangible assets, which are the players. I have been super impressed with officiating from the the very special and the very special Cadem Young uh, refereeing strategy. Um, I think that everybody who has been part of this story will be proud of where we have we are at the moment. Um, investing in in the youth, both in refereeing and in the development of players. Now, the what we are going through today is part of our strategy in the development of, of football. We saw the U15 girls, which is part of the women's football strategy which we launched in 2023 and this is also part of the talent development scheme that we are currently embarking on with the support from FIFA and of course with KGL. Um, I think that this is the future of our sport. If we want to produce the Anas Tandes and Mohamed Polos of, of yesteryears, this is the way to go and I've always said that if we are patient and if we do the right levels of investment, uh, Ghana football will definitely soar up again. And I think we are in the right way. And it's very exciting to see loads of people here in Pram Pram. Pram Pram now looks like a home to everybody. You have spent days here, uh, your good selves, uh, a lot. Almost everybody here have been sleeping here. And it is a change story. Uh, I think that everybody who is seen what we have done here will be proud of the hard work by the leadership of the FA, by the leadership of the management of the facility here. I am, I'm so much touched and proud. Going back memory lane, when it all began, your relationship with uh, KGL, we saw the first imprints uh, at the Medina Astro Turf. We followed up with another competition held in Accra. It is one of your policies that we will take these tournaments to various places so that we bring it closer to the people. So we went to Ashanti last year. We're back in the greater Accra. Along the spread, will you give yourself and when i say yourself the ghana football association and the relationship with kgl foundation will you give it the thumbs up are we where you expected us to be first of all i'm very appreciative of the of the quantum of investment from kgl group the kgl foundation led by chairman uh, alex i think that it's been an amazing blessing to colts football in our country uh, investing a million US dollars over five years towards the development of coast football is something one ought to be happy about. And uh, I'll say kudos to the entire family of KGL. I think that it's also a confirmation of their trust and belief in the leadership of football in our country. Um, we have been very clear, we are very transparent in accounting for every dollar they have invested. Just like we have been very transparent to all corporate entities who have been part of our journey since 2019. And giving the trust to corporate Ghana is always the way to go. And once they, they believe in what you do, they trust that you use and apply their resources judiciously as you promised, they will always come on board. And KGL is one of those who absolutely believe in the leadership of the FA and, and the development of football and most importantly, 
in the provision of opportunities to young kids, boys and girls alike. Um, the future of our country depends on our, on our youth. We are growing every day. We need people to take over the mantle. And, and to do that, you need to create opportunities, you need to invest, and you need to give them clear vision. And this is definitely what the Football Association, your Football Association, is all about. And we're grateful for the strides that have been made so far. We're looking at from top to bottom to top. So it starts from the Premiership, goes lower to the under-17s that we're seeing today, and then it climbs back again. Not only are we looking at the men, but we're also looking at the women, and we've seen substantial rise in its organization, the awareness created. And of course, our levels of women football is also gro growing. And uh, we can only say thank you to the Ghana Football Association under your able leadership for showing the way uh, in terms of strategizing for some of these events and promotions. And of course, at the end of the day, like you said, we are the proud winners of whatever comes through. And in that light, I would want you to share just a second or so to also talk about the inroads we're making with our Catch Them Young policy. Another of your initiatives or another of your brainchilds that you brought to bear, which has blossomed. And today, for the very first time since the competition began, we saw an all-female cast. Well, when, whenever I've had a chance to speak about the Cardem Young strategy or policy, I am filled with emotions. Um, not only because the dream that I had is seeing the light of the day, but also because um, we identified a big problem in our football ecosystem and we, we found perhaps the best solution ever to this big problem. Um, there was a need for us to look at uh, refereeing in our country and, and we thought that uh, the best way is to start investing in, in, in talent at a very young age. Now in football you identify talent early, especially when it has to come to the intangible assets, the players. Uh, but when it comes to other bits of the football ecosystem, uh, match officials, we tend to look out for people who are already matured. And we said no. For us, the best way is to identify kids who have the right levels of passion to officiate, because passion is key. Uh, and then we giving them the enabling environment for them to develop their passion and to realize their dreams. So in 2020, we launched this policy. Over time, we have trained and invested in close to 2,000 young boys and girls uh, from all the regions of our country. And what we are seeing here today is, 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 a, is a signal of our collective future when it comes to refereeing. Um, we had the, was it the FA Cup? We had all female. Today you've seen all girls match officials. We have um, female FIFA referees in, uh, in, our, in our system. And it's our desire that we will continue to invest in this policy uh, by providing them with their basic logistics, uh, uniforms, um, kits, so to say, um, whistles, etc., etc. And, and then we'll continue to give them the opportunities to learn and to learn and to learn over time. The end vision is to produce best referees for, for, for our dear country. Um, in, in the month of August, we would outdoor our first professional referees in this country. And they will come from the Cardem Young refereeing strategy. That will be a big step for, for, for Ghana. Um, referees who would only concentrate on the act of refereeing. And, and and to be as such as as their their profession okay we'll be announcing the the list and i'm happy to say that they'll come from the cardem young refereeing uh, policy this will be a big landmark for our dear country i think that on the whole it, it's a good story for us to to tell and uh, i know that other ma's across africa across the world are looking at what we are doing fifa is very much interested in what we have done and what we are doing and I think that these good strategies and policies will ultimately uh, benefit our football ecosystem and all of us in football should be happy about our collective hard work.
Well, a lot of people have been expectant of this competition and the feedback has been positive. It's been tremendous. As we speak now in Swatreman, it's also bubbling with a lot of excitement as the Division 1 League also kickstarts there. And then very soon, the Ghana Football Association has released fixtures for the Major League itself, which means we are still bringing back or we are sustaining the love that we are sharing even across off-season. What are the expectations going into the big season uh, coming up? And then if you could also share a comment with us about how broadcast issues, etc. will be resolved. Well, well I, I think that you, you now want to uh, really keep me here. <laughs> uh, but uh, one thing that we should be proud of as an FA yeah. is the fact that we have been very consistent in our programming. We have kept all our leagues on schedule. Yes. Over four and a half seasons, five seasons, yes. all our leagues have started on time yes. and have ended as announced. Yes. This is a big plus yes. for our football. And it's a big plus for everybody who has worked in the football ecosystem because it's taken a collective effort okay. by our club owners, our club executives, our chairman, from the GPL, from the DOL, from the WPL to work together in sync with, with, the, with the right levels of, of energy mm. to run all our football programs uh, as planned. Don't forget that beyond our established uh, competitions, we have over time also introduced a lot more competitions, sure. including what we are going through today. So there are lots of football competitions, football properties on our calendar, and all have run according to our plan which is a big, big plus. We should be very, very proud about this. Now, yes, the, the football season, the new football season is gradually uh, uh, nearing us. Um, as you speak, um, there's another tournament ongoing in Insuatre where we are having the Division One Super Cup, and it is very, very interesting. Uh, just to prepare all our clubs for the new football season, which promises to be very, very competitive. Sure. I know our clubs in the GPL are getting ready. Yep. Our women Premier League clubs are getting ready. Yep. Uh, Hazakes are already in camp, uh, getting ready for the Women's Champions League. Yep. Um, the Division 1 League clubs are also preparing. Um, in a season that promises to be extremely interesting. I know you want to hear more from me, but uh, I'm very sure that at the appropriate platforms or platform, I'll have the chance to speak about our leagues. Congress is, is around the corner. It is the highest platform, the best platform for all of us as club people, as football people, to meet and think about our football. And it will be the best platform to, for me to speak to our, our, our members and, and, and Ghana. Uh, for everybody to know about the plans we have for the further development of our, of our leagues. I think that there's been loads of gains over, over time okay. and it is time for us to, to consolidate on the gains that we have made. Yeah. It's also time for us to think more about the development of youth football and it's also time for us to work with all key stakeholders to bring back the 12th man of our game, our fans. I think they deserve more. Sure. I think our fans deserve more respect. I think our fans deserve more attention. Yeah. And uh, beginning from our upcoming Congress, I think I'll make a clear statement about the need for us to pay attention to the 12th man of our game, the powerhouse of our football, and also most important, like I said, the need for us to pay attention or to shift attention to youth football, which is the future of our sport. GFA President Mr. Kerti Esokreku, we say very big thank you for spending a little bit of your time with us. We are very, very appreciative. You have been that. very, very crafty. You know. <laughs> and we can only wish for more <laughs> blessings and favor to come your way. And uh, we also hope that you do enjoy your stay here in Pram Pram since I have now the landlord thank you welcoming you here. So enjoy your stay and I'm sure the good old relationship that already abounds will also blossom and cherish into something big. Thank you for talking to Ghanaians live on TV thank and you. we are very grateful. Thank, thank, you. thank you very thank much. You.